In this video, I'm going to show you how to access probability functions of a scientific or graphing calculator. You can see here in problems one through four, things that you might need to type into your calculator to evaluate. You'll understand what these are after watching the lesson video. So if you haven't done that already, you might wanna go and do that first. So the first example here, this six with the exclamation point is how to calculate six factorial. Whatever version of a graphing calculator you have, if that's what you're using, here's how you would type that in. You would put in the base of your factorial first, which is six, and then right below, in my case, it's a green alpha key, um, on the left-hand side of the calculator, you have this math button. I would press the math key and you have a math menu, a number menu, a complex menu, and a PRB menu. PRB stands for probability. So using your right arrow key, you'll go over to PRB and you can see that the exclamation point is choice four. So I'm gonna go down to choice four, hit enter, hit enter again, and it has calculated my factorial correctly. It's the same as doing six times five times four times three times two times one without having to type all of that out. In number two, you're asked to evaluate the expression six factorial divided by three factorial times two factorial. As I mentioned in the lesson video, you need to be very careful here. I'm gonna put in my numerator, six, go get my factorial. Use my division key, and then I must put my denominator in parentheses. So I'm going to put parentheses, three factorial, times two, and go get another factorial symbol close it up and hit enter. 60 is the correct answer. Now watch what happens if I did not include the parentheses. I get the wrong answer. So please, even if the expression on paper does not have it, make sure you put parentheses around your denominator. Okay, to calculate 7p2, or the number of permutations of seven objects using two at a time, you need to put the first number, the left number in first, then go to the math key and the probability menu, choose the second choice, NPR, and then put your R value in after that notation. So this is how you would enter 7P2. Hit enter, you should get 42. And to type in the last one, 6C5, again, you hit six, go to probability menu, choose NCR, and put in five. And again, with either one of those commands, if you're gonna have to do something else to it, you're gonna wanna put it in parentheses. So if you're gonna take uh, six, choose five, and you know divide it by, I don't know, five, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to put that numerator, the whole thing in parentheses to make it clear. So that's how you use a graphing calculator. Next, we'll take a look at how to use a scientific calculator. Here's one of the more popular scientific calculators. And you can see on this calculator, you have a PRB key. That's gonna be where you find your probability functions. So I'm gonna type in six, hit PRB, and across the top of the screen, you have three choices. Use the right arrow to move over to select the factorial, hit enter, and you have calculated six factorial. To calculate seven P2, go ahead and put in the seven, press the PRB key, choose NPR, hit enter, and put in the two. Here's another, uh, Casio is another very common brand of calculator that students might have. And just to show you what you're looking for here, you can see there is an NCR button, NPR is above it. So you would need to hit the shift key to access that. And you can see your X factorial key is right next to it.
So usually you're going to find your probability functions in a similar type location. Now the difficulty with whatever scientific calculator you might have is there is no standard location where the probability tools are kept. So when in doubt, you should Google your calculator model and put the word probability after it, and that should help you find it if you can't locate it yourself.